in chapter 8, we are going to attempt to quantify a bit about what we talked about in chapter 7. How countries grow or don't grow. In this chapter, we are going to use something called the Solo model, developed by economist Robert Solo, for which he won a Nobel Prize. And we are going to use that to understand how countries grow. We need to first, though, understand two separate kinds of growth. In the year 2010, the U.S. economy grew at a 2.2% rate in terms of GDP per capita. Everyone in 2010, the GDP was 2.2% higher, 2.2% more stuff produced in 2010 than in 2009. In China, on the other hand, GDP per capita grew 10%. GDP per capita 10% higher than it was in 2009. Why is it that China is growing so much faster than the US? Is China a more functional economy? Is it a better place to live? Will this continue indefinitely? We need to explain the difference between cutting edge growth and catching up growth. The US economy is already one of the most advanced in the world. The US economy already has all of the machines and all of the tractors and toasters and electricity that it really needs. If the US wants to get wealthier, it can't just buy more tractors. It needs to invent new ideas. It needs to invent GPS positioning, drought resistant seeds. It needs to invent ways to make cars better, ways to transfer data more efficiently. In short, the US economy grows through the invention of new technologies and new ideas. This is called cutting edge growth because anything new that we want to get, we have to invent. The US economy is on the cutting edge and grows through the invention of new technologies and new ideas. The Chinese economy, on the other hand, is catching up. The Chinese economy does not yet have all of the technologies the United States has. It can still put in more electricity. It can still build plumbing. It can still provide internet to its people, sanitation, healthcare. It can still improve its food production to the level the US is at currently. China is catching up, which means it is accumulating capital. It is catching up with the United States, rather than trying to grow on new ideas. It is easier to catch up than it is to grow at the cutting edge. This should make sense, because in China, they can just copy the technologies already available in the United States. They don't have to invent the internet again. The internet has already been invented. All China has to do is make it available to its people. They don't need to invent the new medical technologies we have in the US. They just need to make those medical technologies available to their people. This is why China's GDP per capita grows so quickly these days. China is catching up with the US. All right. We are first going to try to understand catching up growth. Catching up growth is, we're going to do this through the solo model. The solo model, as I said, is going to be a way for us to ex understand production. 
we are going to model this production function, y equals f of a k e l. What does that mean? We are going to explain the relationship between y, remember, GDP, and our factors of production from our last lecture. Physical capital, K. Human capital, that is education times labor, EL. And ideas, technological knowledge. Our production function says that GDP is a function of our factors of production. Ideas, capital, physical capital, and human capital. This is just what we did in our last lecture. Here. GDP is a function of physical capital, human capital, and technology. GDP is a function of physical capital, human capital, and technology. For now, we are going to focus on catching up growth, that is, getting more capital. This, in this example, imagine that all of the farmers in your country only have hoes. Improving their physical capital would mean just getting them more tractors. You don't have to invent the tractor. You don't have to get more people. You just have to give your people access to more physical capital K, more tractors. We will assume that technological knowledge is constant, that education is constant, and that our population is constant. We will focus only on more capital, that is, on the addition of tractors to our farmers. We should expect that the addition of more capital to our farmers should produce more output. That is, as K increases, Y should increase. As we give our people more tractors, K, they should produce more grain, Y. For instance, okay, one quick math thing. For those of you who are wondering how we can just drop A, E, and L out of the equation, this is something that you may want to know. L is constant. So an increase in the amount of capital there is implies an increase in the amount of capital for each worker. K divided by L, capital per worker. An increase in Y, right here, is also an increase in output per worker, Y over L. Because L is constant, we can ignore the number of people. After all, adding one more tractor to one person is the same as adding a thousand more tractors to a thousand people. So we'll just do a small example here of output and tractors. Put that in the center of our graph here. And I'm going to flip these two. Tractors and output. With zero tractors, let's say that our, we have a, got five farmers. With zero tractors, maybe they can produce 50 bushels of corn. They have to do it with hoes. When they get one tractor, they put the tractor, tractor goes to the highest valued use, right? You don't use the tractor for hauling children around on tours of your farm when you only have one tractor. You put it to its highest valued use. Perhaps this is planting and harvesting. And now you can produce a thousand bushels of corn with your tractor. If you get a second tractor, well, now you're going to put it to its second highest use. Maybe this is 
spreading fertilizer. And now you can produce 1,500 bushels of corn. Why do you not put the first tractor to use spreading fertilizer? Because you put it to the most valuable use, the thing you most need, harvesting and planting. Maybe with a third tractor, the tractor will go to its third highest use. Maybe this is keeping it as a backup in case one of the other two breaks. And having access to that might increase your production to 1,750 bushels of corn. So what do we notice here? We notice diminishing marginal returns to capital, don't we? That is, each additional tractor adds less output than the previous one. The first tractor, going from zero to one tractors, increases production by 950 additional bushels. You go from 50 bushels to 1,000. The second tractor adds an additional 500 bushels of production. And the third tractor adds an additional 250 bushels. Each additional tractor adds less output than the previous. And this is because we push, put the first tractor to the highest value juice, the second to the second, and the third to the third, and so on. Adding more capital produces more output at a diminishing rate because each one is less useful than the previous units. This is called the marginal product of capital. How much additional output is caused by the addition of one more unit of capital? The marginal product of our first tractor is 950 bushels of corn. The marginal product of our second tractor is 500 bushels of corn, and the marginal product of our third tractor is 250 bushels of corn. The marginal product of each additional unit of capital diminishes because capital is put to its most valuable uses first. The marginal product diminishes because the first unit of capital is put to use in its most valuable use, the second in its second most valuable use, and so on. Now in this class, we are going to want to consistently, we will want to model diminishing marginal returns to capital because each additional unit of capital adds less to output than the previous unit did. To do that, we will use the simplest diminishing function, y equals the square root of k. What does this look like? Let's put output here. Physical capital here. And here, you can have zero capital. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We know that our relationship is that output is a function of the square root of k. And so, this is what our output looks like. We can also put our marginal product of capital here. That is the change in output from each additional unit of capital. 
The first tractor increases our output from 0 to 1. The second tractor increases our output from 1 to 1.41, which is a 0.414 unit increase in output. This goes with a third unit of capital to 1.73, a 0.318 increase in Y. And we see diminishing returns to capital. We get less additional output from each additional unit of capital. To get one unit of output, we need one unit of capital. To get two units of output, we need three more units of capital. To get three units of output, we need five more units of capital. In order to get four units of output, we need 16 units of capital. So this is what that function looks like. y equals the square root of k. And we're going to use this function a lot in this class. We're going to use this a lot. The first unit of capital produces one unit of output. The second gives us an additional 0.41. So our output is now 1.41. Nine unit of capital gives us three units of output. But the tenth unit of capital only increases our output by about 0.2. we see that each additional unit of capital adds less output than the previous. The first unit of input creates a lot of output. The tenth unit of input creates only a little. The eleventh, even less. The twelfth, even less than that. So why has Chinese growth been so rapid? Mm. Let's pick up that in a second.